to Fox 25 News is hearing from two families mourning the loss of loved ones to violence. One of them is searching for answers after a murder more than three years ago. The case raising questions about the Safe Streets program. The other, the family of 23-year-old Fabian Sanchez Gonzalez. He was shot during an armed robbery inside of a cell phone store in Canton over the weekend. A kind soul, a kind-hearted person, 23-year-old brother, son, friend, co-worker. Good evening, everybody. I'm Mary Bubala. I'm Kai Jackson. Our team of reporters has both families' powerful stories. Fox 45's Keith Daniels spoke with the family of the man fatally wounded in Canton as they get ready to lay their son and brother to rest. Keith. Well, Mary, his name is Fabian Sanchez Gonzalez. His family spent today uh, making funeral arrangements. A difficult day, they say, but tonight they're speaking out. <laughs> in a living room in South Baltimore, a family overwhelmed with grief, but wanting to talk publicly about what happened to their loved one. 23-year-old Fabian Sanchez Gonzalez shot and killed while working inside the T-Mobile store in Canton last Sunday. It breaks a heart to know that we lost my brother to two criminals run wild in this city. Fabian's mother and father, unable to speak English, but wanting to be heard. Estoy muerta en vida. Lo que le pasó a mi hijo. No puedo sentir si estoy perdiendo a mi hijo. Both parents saying they are alive, but dead inside with the loss of their son, Fabian. Nobody wants to hear their son at work doing an honest job. Being shot over people trying to steal phones, money, or whatever they're trying to do. Police say the shooting happened after two men entered the building, announced a robbery, then one of them shot Fabian, then both suspects ran away, still on the loose. The deadly incident happened in City Councilman Zeke Cohen's district. This was a heartless, cold blooded murder. Fabian's family members calling on city leaders, including Cohen and the mayor to do something to get the city's crime crisis under control. We want justice for my brother. That we want Brandon Scott to fulfill, to protect this city, run this city from crime. I'm not going to make this about the mayor. To me, this is about the young man who lost his life, just doing his job. For me, I am committing to doing everything within my power to both hold the police department accountable to bring the perpetrators to justice. Justice, they say, for Fabian. He wanted peace. He was a peace man, so I know he wanted peace. No violence on his heart at all. Well, Councilman Cohen met with the family. We're told that one of his staff members was a friend of Fabian's. Meantime, if you have any information about this case, you're urged to call Metro Crime Stoppers. Remember, you can remain anonymous and could be eligible for a reward. We're live tonight. Keith Daniels, Fox 45 News. Okay, thank you. The murder of Fabian Sanchez Gonzalez is striking a chord with the Baltimore City business owner. She says in six months she was robbed at gunpoint twice. She tells Fox 45 News the tragedy of Fabian Sanchez Gonzalez inspired her to share her story. I'm sad for him. I'm sad for his family. The PTSD that it's bringing back to me. Well, coming up at 1030, her message to city leaders and a story you'll only see on Fox 45. Well, turning now to a new debate at City Hall over Councilman Yitzi Schleifer's effort to better track how tax dollars are being spent. His bill calls for more transparency and accountability in the grant awarding process. Right now, once money is given to nonprofits, it's difficult to see where it goes. We've seen just in the past year, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars going out the door uh, through the ARPA funding and other funding. And it's important to know where that money is going, what those organizations are doing. Uh, and this bill is going to help is going to help improve that. This will hopefully uh, answer a lot of questions that people have as to where the money is going and are we getting a good return on on those investments. 
Well, it's possible this bill could shed light on how the Safe Streets program spends its money. Fox 45 News has been investigating that issue for more than a year. Taxpayer watchdog David Williams says transparency is key. People want this program to work. They want the streets to be safer, but they just don't know where the money is going. A lot of money is being spent and a lot of lives are at risk. Taxpayers and the citizens want to know that the money that's being spent is being spent wisely. We know City Council President Nick Mosby is co-sponsoring the bill along with Council Members Zeke Cohen and Danielle McCray. Mark Conway and Antonio Glover voiced support for it. We sent questions to other members asking where they stand, but we have not yet heard back. Fox 45 News then pressed Mayor Scott about the plan yesterday, but he didn't really take a stance. I'm always someone that talks about transparency, but when you think about our grants, right, and the grants that the city gets, uh, I don't think that anybody's going to argue that, especially when we get them from the federal and the state government that has a lot of requirements and that information is out there for the public to see. We're always going to be pushing that out there. We'll see and talk with the council member about the, the piece of legislation as it goes through the process. The legislation has been sent to the Rules and Legislative Oversight Committee for further debate. It is not clear when a hearing will be scheduled. Well, we want to hear from you. Do you think your council members should support the transparency bill? So far, 98% of voters say yes. Head to foxbaltimore.com slash vote to weigh in. When it comes to the Safe Streets program, the case of a man killed more than three years ago is raising more questions about how it operates. After the murder of my father. I um, met somebody who I'm deeply connected to who had a relationship with Safe Streets. And even from their experience, I can say that I don't know how safe it is. Fox 45's Mackenzie Frost spoke with the family searching for answers. She has a closer look at new questions about the Safe Streets program. Demond Scroggins. He was a challenging little young man at first. Was a man with a past. Did some, some time in prison. Some gun and drug charges stacked up on his record, but his father, Charles Goods, and daughter Paige Scroggins. My father was the best. Say Demond was a man looking to turn his life around. He had shared with me probably about a couple of weeks before he was murdered um, that he was looking to be hired by Safe Street. Mm -hmm. Did he say why he wanted to get involved? Well, he was looking for employment. On September 9th, 2019, Scroggins was shot and killed inside a home on East Lafayette Avenue, while his girlfriend, who was a Safe Streets employee, was upstairs. Iman had called her and said that he had just finished fighting her co-worker and he was on his way home. So he rode home on the bike. According to court records, Ronald Brady Jr. was charged with Demond's murder, going to trial once in 2022, ending in a hung jury. Brady went to trial again this year, where he was found not guilty in March. Fox 45 News obtaining records showing Brady was hired by the Baltimore Community Mediation Center to serve as the site director of the Woodbourne McCabe Safe Streets location on June 25th, 2019. Just over a week after Scroggins was killed, Brady was fired. We've been investigating the organization for years. We still don't have that information. Fox 45 News has been trying to get more information about who the Safe Streets workers are. The city of Baltimore redacting the names of all of the employees. The city shielding that information along with other details about the operations of the program. After threatening to sue, Baltimore City finally handing over contracts with the nonprofits operating the Safe Street site. The hundreds of pages include the Woodbourne McCabe site contract, requiring the nonprofit to pay for criminal background checks of all employees, contractors, and volunteers. And with Brady's record, including second degree murder, assault, drug and gun convictions, the contract prompted us to send Monzi a few questions, including what is the city's screening process or policies when it comes to hiring Safe Streets employees? Is there a threshold of violence or certain crimes that prohibit people from being hired? Monzi responding, saying the agency provides some oversight to the groups who then run the Safe Streets sites. Jackson's office also often not answering some questions about how Safe Streets workers spend their days on the clock. 
Calling through the court records of Brady's murder trial, Fox 45 News finding evidence the Safe Streets workers were not meeting at their locations. Scroggins' girlfriend, who worked at the Woodbourne McCain site too, was interviewed by police in January of 2020. According to the transcript, she says the Safe Streets employees would meet at places like Applebee's or McDonald's, and she was told how to clock in on my phone without actually having to go to work. Not being at the location lines up with months of investigating. Going to Safe Street sites, only to be met with mostly silence. The city maintains Safe Streets is effective, pointing to this Johns Hopkins report outlining some measures of success. But for this family, has your view of the Safe Streets program changed throughout this? Absolutely. Week? Oh, yes. Yes. My belief is that our city government is financing a criminal enterprise. I believe that within my heart. Our city government is so invested in it that it's turning a blind eye to, to what it really is. There are people with ill will involved. There are people who are operating under the disguise that they are trying to reform in some way. And I'm so sorry to the people who are involved with good intentions because you're involved with a program that has no intention on doing what it says that it's trying to do. The program designed to turn the streets of Baltimore into a safe space is forever tainted to them. And they say the program needs a lot of work before success can be seen. They need to screen these guys. They need to screen them for their context, what type of context they have now. You know, are they still dealing with the same people that they were dealing with before? Scrap it and start it over with a new layout. It takes more than a band-aid to really address an issue. Scrapping the program isn't likely. Last month, Mayor Brandon Scott and Director Jackson both announced an additional $5 million investment will be going to the Safe Streets program. In the newsroom, Mackenzie Frost, Fox 45 News. Now, a spokesperson for Monzi also issued a statement telling Fox 45 News in part, our frontline workers have a deep enough love for the people of Baltimore that they risk their lives to mediate conflicts and promote peace. This work will not stop, and Monzi, in partnership with our site administrators, will continue to ensure every Safe Street site has strong buy-in, understanding, and integrity in and around communities they serve. I'm Kai Jackson. Thank you for watching. Here's another video to watch. Also, please take a moment to subscribe to our channel.